program so far, lots of in interesting discussions. And now we want to take you over to our final speaker for today. And uh, this is Dr. Tomiszwa Kro. Dr. Kro is from Poland. He did his PhD at Danz University of Technology. He is a priest and leader of the Society of Pomeranian Rodnova's Janta, founded in 2010. The group's priority is internal spiritual development, focused on the living spirituality and experience of gods and ancestors. It will also focus on cultural learnings and social activities aimed at promoting knowledge about Slavic tradition and culture. So remember, if you want to ask any question to Dr. Crow, please do uh, submit your questions into the uh, Weaver app and we'll be more than happy to present them to Dr. Crow um, after his 20 minutes talk. So he will be speaking about a way to the gods, contemporary approach to Slavic theology. I'll pass it over to you now, Dr. Crow. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, we can. Thank you. So now I will share my screen with a presentation I have for you. Uh, a Way to the Gods is a contemporary theological approach uh, in uh, my association of Pomeranian Rodnovers uh, Jantar. Uh, and uh, as some of you may be not very familiar with uh, Rodnovery, so uh, nowadays uh, continuation of Slavic faith, I will briefly introduce the sources uh, on which we base. And then I will come to the way to the gods and the basic concepts, which you can see listed here. The animism, which is the very uh, basic foundation for this, the nature and its role from our point of view. Also the myths and the, their meaning for shaping the correct world order. Uh, and uh, the concepts uh, more connected with the man itself on so the community and the culture along uh, with this the ethics uh, which we try to apply to our lives and uh, the smooth uh, coming to the concluding uh, part the most important from today's conference point of view so the soul and its uh, goal from our uh, point of view of course and the last part, uh, which is the cosmos and the man, uh, referring the role of uh, inter, uh, interference between the man and the universe itself. But uh, coming to the beginning, the sources of contemporary Rodnoveri, uh, we learn about the original Slavic uh, faith upon uh, some texts like chronicles and travelers' relations. We do have uh, quite a lot of uh, these. Uh, the chronicles, in fact, mainly describe the wars the neighboring nations uh, conducted uh, between uh, themselves and the Slavs. And the travelers' relations uh, also uh, bring more information about the local customs. We also have some missionary literature and sermons from Christianization period, as uh, we unfortunately do not have the uh, writing records from the pagan Slavs themselves. Uh, however, we do have uh, some archaeological sources like statues, the one you can see uh, on my presentation uh, is uh, so-called Sviatovit from uh, Rivers Brooch. Uh, and uh, as you may see, it is ornamented uh, with a pattern of uh, some uh, characters here. Uh, and it is believed uh, to represent the idea of a threefold universe. Among other archaeological uh, treasures, uh, I have to mention the jewelry and weapons. Among these, the most important uh, or may the gaining the most interest recently are knife scabbards, as their uh, rich ornamentation also is uh, believed to carry 
uh, rich mythological meanings. But in fact, uh, the main uh, body of our uh, uh, sources uh, for uh, Slavic faith revival is the folklore, of course, uh, bringing uh, the celebrations of annual festivals uh, and uh, social rites, the rites of passage uh, from youth to other, the marriage and the funerals, etc., uh, which uh, show us the ritualized lifestyle but also the very important part, the oral culture, having the song, folk tales, uh, and uh, similar texts, uh, which uh, in their uh, general body form something we can call the language worldview, uh, and uh, we can use it to decode uh, the way of thinking our ancestors had, but also other forms of uh, spiritual culture, among these, the customs, beliefs, the medicine, which was uh, rich in uh, magical actions, and the uh, demonology, uh, which uh, referred to, I suppose, the animistic uh, thinking of our ancestors. And in the picture here, uh, you can see a sketch of uh, Adam Czarnocki. It was his original name, uh, but uh, he is more widely known as Zorian Dołęga Hodakowski. This man uh, is considered to be a pioneer of uh, Slavic faith revival, as uh, he was the first one uh, to seriously start gathering the uh, folk heritage, the folk songs uh, and uh, tales. Uh, so, and he openly affirmed the uh, importance <coughs> of the Slavic faith uh, for our uh, identity. And uh, from Zorian Dołęga Hodakowski, it started, in fact, uh, to appear uh, in a Poland. I'm uh, talking specifically about the Poland. To appear uh, people coming back to, the, uh, to our uh, original heritage. Uh, in 19th century, there was an organization, Zievonia, uh, which uh, directly referred to the heritage of uh, Hodakowski. Also 19th century poets, uh, uh, they were not, the poets were not in fact the uh, pagans themselves, or in most of them did not recognize themselves uh, like this but they uh, started to include the folk elements uh, into their art. And a uh, quite important character is uh, Roman Zmorski, uh, who also uh, started a gathering, he also was involved in gathering uh, and analyzing uh, the folk material. However, the mo more uh, active uh, Slavic movement uh, started just uh, before World War II, uh, where there, there started some organizations like Zadruga or Światowit Venerators Circle. And among these organizations, I have to mention the Hornet Heart uh, Tribe. It's a leader and uh, you can say a chief, uh, Stanisław Szukalski, is visible here. Uh, Hornet Heart Tribe was in fact not strictly religious organizations, it was a group of uh, artists. Szukalski himself was mainly a sculptor, however, he also left uh, quite a lot of drawings and paintings. Uh, and Horned Heart Tribe uh, affirmed uh, creating a purely Polish uh, national uh, uh, art, branch of art. Uh, but uh, the most important from our point of view, I suppose, is Franciszek Fronczak, uh, who uh, was the longest living uh, member of Horned Heart Tribe. This organization uh, is uh, already dead, in fact. Uh, and Franciszek Fronczak uh, openly uh, affirmed also uh, importance of uh, original Slavic beliefs. I also would like to mention uh, Professor Maria Janion, who was uh, 
unfortunately deceased uh, quite recently. I put a dot uh, at her surname as, uh, as far as I know. She did not recognize herself as a road mover. However, she uh, made a very important statement uh, that the baptism of Poland, uh, along with uh, a huge destruction of our tradition, uh, left uh, uh, unhealed scar on the Polish hearts. And uh, in fact, uh, she also uh, spoke about the uh, importance of Slavic of a Slavic tradition for Poland. And uh, currently we have several uh, religious associations uh, existing in Poland. Some of uh, these you have listed here. Um, I had a problem with translating uh, Polish term for um, religious association, which is in fact equivalent from the low point of view to the church and a smaller one uh, organization, the uh, religious association. And uh, there are uh, something thin operating in Poland currently, I suppose. And one of uh, these is the Yantar, which uh, I do represent. And we also participate in registration of uh, root. On the next slide, uh, you have a photo of Franciszek Fronczek, uh, about whom I have mentioned uh, a bit earlier. And one of his uh, oil paintings, the groove of Sventovit. And there you can uh, see a Catholic priest chopping uh, one of the holy trees. And uh, this painting uh, is specific to Fronczek's uh, view on Christianization and as he also uh, recognized uh, the original Slavic faith as most important for the Poles. But coming uh, to the nowadays concepts uh, and uh, the main topic of my presentation, the way to the gods, is a contemporary system proposed of uh, Slavic theology. It's a more uh, current state of thinking uh, in Yantar, in fact, as this is specific uh, for us in Yantar, uh, not a set of uh, necessary dogmas. Despite being theocentric uh, with uh, personally uh, recognized gods, uh, it is strongly rooted in animistic worldview. Uh, in animistic worldview, uh, and uh, it is uh, considered uh, to form a spiritual continuity among entire being. And uh, we assume uh, proper, which means a healthy balance uh, between the nature and the human culture, culture in its widest sense, so along with all technical uh, actions also. And uh, from our point of view, fundamental meaning is assigned uh, to the uh, actual spiritual experience. Uh, however, this experience must be rooted in ancestors' traditions, which is uh, considered for us as a source uh, on which we can build uh, this, our experience and the frame uh, and the kind of a map uh, helping us to move uh, within it. And coming I back. Know, um, I feel that, you know, just conscious of time and the fact, obviously, it's such an interesting presentation. And we do have some questions that we'd love for you to answer. Um, is, that, is that okay? Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, brilliant. So the first question we have is... Um, uh, so we've got a question from Katie, who's actually said that she's never really heard of the Slavic faith before today. So why do you think there is little knowledge outside of the immediate country? Okay, I suppose uh, I have uh, also before this presentation received a signal that uh, most of attendees may be unfamiliar with Rodno very well reason why I put these uh, first slides uh, into it. 
Uh, I suppose that the main uh, reg uh, reason lies in uh, lack of uh, original sources. As I mentioned, we do mm -hmm. not uh, have uh, original uh, pagan uh, written texts uh, for uh, Slavic faith. But also, I suppose uh, that we are slightly next to the mainstream uh, of uh, modern, nowadays, European culture. Uh, and uh, thus, uh, we have uh, awards, uh, let's say, uh, PR, let's say, uh, then uh, Druids uh, and uh, Norwegian and Scandinavian uh, mythos has, as uh, the Scandinavian uh, mythos and uh, Celtic ones, uh, uh, they in fact came into the popular culture and then uh, these are well recognized by, by almost everybody. In fact, uh, in a quite uh, falsified way, uh, many times, we know that uh, when a popular culture takes some element, it easily modifies uh, its, uh, on its own needs. Uh, and I suppose that's uh, why more or less the Slavic culture is uh, less recognized uh, mm -hmm. by most of people. Recently. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, we have an, a question from Akshay, and uh, what they're asking is, what are you doing for your youth to follow your own tradition? Okay. What's the youth uh, engagement like for, your, uh, for this tradition currently? So... Uh, currently, Yantar is one of organizations uh, which uh, main uh, role is uh, to organize and conduct celebrations uh, of uh, festivals uh, of our year circle, but also uh, not Yantar specifically, but all these organizations are involved uh, in uh, organizing lectures in schools, for example and uh, trying uh, to cooperate with cultural organizations like museums to help to propagate at least knowledge uh, on uh, the Slavic traditions. As uh, I mentioned, Professor Maria Janion, she also raised the problem of lack of uh, consciousness mm -hmm. of uh, own uh, identity, in fact, coming from uh, ancestors' heritage. And these are the problems we are most facing nowadays and trying uh, to fix. Great, that's fantastic. Now, how do you balance, um, how do you balance your tradition and modern lifestyle? Okay, uh, as I mentioned uh, during my presentation, uh, we put the most weight to the own uh, spiritual experience. It is, uh, I suppose, quite easier for an animistic worldview as we recognize the living spirit uh, even if uh, everyday use uh, tools and items. So we can try to approach them uh, similarly as our tradition uh, gave us our ancestors uh, approach the spirits uh, of nature and in fact spirits of their households. But mm. in fact, uh, some of uh, road novels complain that uh, their, uh, let's say, everyday life uh, lacks, from their point of view, spirituality, as uh, modern times uh, just uh, take us, uh, require too much focus from us uh, on everyday affairs. And in fact, the main uh, points at which we celebrate our spirituality are the celebrations of annual rituals and the social rights, in fact. Right, okay, thank you. Now, um, Katie has asked, has asked a question. Would you say that the Slavic faith incorporates ancestor worship? Could you repeat, please? Or... Would you say the Slavic faith incorporates ancestor worship? Yes, of course, uh, it uh, incorporates, uh, that's the word I didn't uh, understand, uh, the ancestors worship. Uh, we have, uh, in fact, several rituals uh, focused on the ancestors uh, cult. The most important uh, of them is in November, beginning of uh, November, 
It is uh, called Jade in Polish, which you can directly translate as ancestors, but also the spring uh, celebrations uh, incorporate uh, worshiping uh, them. The ancestors uh, are recognized uh, as our guides, uh, and we often ask them uh, for their support. And uh, in fact, in Yantar, uh, we invite the, the spirits uh, to participate in each uh, of the celebration that we conduct. Excellent, excellent. So, um, sorry, I'm just finding the question. So, are Slavic traditions closely related to the Nordic and the Germanic traditions? I think it might uh, make uh, something a bit similar. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, the Indo-European uh, comparative mythology is a basic tool uh, for uh, recognizing the Slavic mythology. Uh, and I can say that these are closely related. Uh, as, in fact, geographically, there's no great reason that uh, it would be much uh, separately treated. Uh, and you can uh, find uh, quite a lot of parallels among uh, these, the, our main mythos, uh, the struggle between the Thunderer and the Serpent. Also the ancestors' worship, I suppose, uh, is quite universal for our cultures. So, yes, uh, it is uh, obviously not the same. Uh, these are, uh, I suppose, uh, I miss the word, the separate cultures, but uh, they belong to the one, uh, they are branches of the one tree of uh, European or Indo-European cultures. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Um... Sorry, we're getting a lot of questions in and just thought this is a great opportunity to have this interaction. And um, I mean, if you do want to say a few closing words, we're more than happy to have that before, um, before then. So I'll just say, go back to a couple of the questions that we have received. Um, so I've got uh, Mar Maya here saying, thank you for your presentation. May you suggest some resources for further reading of the philosophical foundation on your traditions, such as a relationship with nature, health, wholeness, um, into human relationships. So where is it that they can find these resources? Are things available on the internet or would you recommend certain books or authors? Well, in fact, uh, most of books uh, I can recommend uh, may be hardly available for you as these are uh, Polish books, in fact. Some Russian uh, issues are also uh, mainly Ivanov and Toporov from Rus Russia are uh, valuable. Uh, however, I would uh, advise to avoid uh, at least the uh, initial part uh, searching in the internet uh, itself. Uh, not maybe looking for the books in the internet, but I would uh, advise to avoid pages uh, describing uh, the Slavic mythology as uh, due to scarcity of sources, there are a lot of people who try to, let's say, fix uh, the gaps on their own and to create uh, some own propositions with not uh, much base in the uh, source material. So first of all, I would advise to seek uh, for some uh, scientific uh, journals uh, on the religion on religions uh, and Slavic mythology, and then uh, come to the books. Okay, so you made a really interesting point there, the scarcity of the resources. Now, what is it that your group can do to kind of help towards this? I mean, uh, have you embraced the social media platform? Is there certain things, ways that you're trying to educate people about the Slavic tradition to make sure that misunderstanding or misrepresentation isn't happening, which is easily done, especially in the world of the World Wide Web? Um, so, so what is it? How are you tackling that? Uh, the one of the, uh, let's say, Initiatives uh, of the Polish uh, Rodnovers uh, community is a calendar of Rodnovers, uh, which is uh, mainly issued in uh, Polish. However, it was also translated to some foreign languages and uh, sold uh, outside the Poland. So it is uh, how we try also uh, 
to come out from uh, own uh, homeland also with our knowledge. And to, but uh, in fact, uh, at this stage, we focus uh, on bringing our tradition uh, alive again in our own country. That's the stage that we are now in fact. Yeah, okay, no, absolutely. And um, so, so I, I think I read in your bio that um, you're organizing a lot of events and things to, to obviously pass that knowledge and there's so one of the questions that we've received is could you tell us more about how members of your community seek to engage the wealth of natural heritage in Poland um, and I think you made reference to that slight reference to it in your uh, bio as well so maybe if you could expand on that how is it that you're connecting to the the, the heritage uh, so uh, uh, according Organization, the events, uh, in fact, uh, I, these are what I mentioned earlier. So uh, some members of uh, Yantar organize uh, the lectures uh, or uh, workshops with kids mm. in the schools uh, also sometimes for teaching them about the Slavic heritage. Uh, we also plan uh, at this stage, uh, some acts connected with uh, protection of some natural uh, places, especially important uh, for our group, especially. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, we are at the stage uh, when we start uh, to operate in a more open public uh, sphere. Uh, and we also cooperate, uh, especially with uh, one of uh, Sopot Museum, Archaeological Museum. Uh, with some uh, initiatives uh, which allow to promote uh, the original Slavic heritage. Brilliant. And uh, we've got um, a question from Ravi, who's asked, what is the biggest misconception we hold about the Slavic traditions? Uh, misconception uh, in, uh, in what understanding? So maybe you already made kind of made reference to like the resources which are not true to the Slavic tradition. So, so what is there in those that's not making it okay. um, a valid I I suppose, or credible source? Uh, I suppose that uh, in such uh, understanding, the main issue we have to uh, face now is maybe not even the lack of uh, resources uh, because uh, we lack the resources from the original historical period. We have the mm -hmm. resource, uh, the folklore, which I mentioned, and uh, it is uh, the quite a good base uh, for us, as it preserves a lot of original tradition. The main issue, in fact, uh, lies in uh, modern times, uh, where uh, because in Poland the Rodnover movement is quite young, in fact, uh, especially comparing uh, to Lithuania or other countries uh, with uh, longer traditions uh, of uh, ethnic faiths revival. Uh, so we are in fact uh, forming uh, the contemporary Rodnoveri uh, and building our uh, social recognition. Excellent. So what we'd love from you, Dr. Crow, is, is like some closing remarks on, on the topic. It'll be great to, to have a few words from you before we end this session. Okay, so um, about closing remarks, maybe I will just uh, go to the last slide of my presentation, which also was a summary of what I was intending uh, to say. Uh, so, the first of uh, all, everything uh, that uh, helps us to bring us closer to the divine, uh, to our gods, uh, is considered uh, as good. Also, the animism concept I mentioned earlier uh, induces a great responsibility, as uh, each uh, other being uh, may be considered as self-conscious and uh, actively interacting with us. And uh, we have to recognize the tradition uh, of our ancestors as a guidepost and a background uh, for our nowadays experience and actions. Uh, so it is why we should preserve it, preserve it as a map for our nowadays experience. 
However, uh, I didn't say uh, manage to say it earlier, but we also recognize the nature, despite we do not venerate the nature itself for its own, we recognize it as a hierophany, uh, allowing, uh, in fact, all people to deduce about the holy, and it is the basic source for entire being, being uh, in uh, its uh, most wide uh, meaning. And in fact, the human culture roles, culture from capital letters, so the one supporting the good, supporting coming closer uh, in soul's maturity uh, among the gods, uh, is to boost uh, individual's growth uh, in this uh, soul's maturity sense and to preserve such uh, growth conditions for the entire community. Uh, I mentioned uh, also at some moment uh, that the soul's goal, goal we recognize uh, is its rise, self-improvement to the assumptively uh, achieved state of divinity and uh, it is more uh, co better compared to gaining maturity than any kind of uh, moral price uh, or anything like this. And it is a straight conclusion from our uh, treat for uh, the entire being a spiritual continuity, uh, which includes uh, entire being. So not only what the biology uh, recognizes as the living, but also man, uh, inanimate objects like our tools, uh, households, but this uh, entire spiritual continuity includes uh, the gods towards which uh, we try to come closer on also. So I suppose it's everything uh, I could uh, tell you in this time. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Crow. That was definitely, you know, something that we've all learned. It's not a tradition that many of us are familiar with. So just you giving that insightful information has definitely raised so much curiosity amongst us. And that just goes by all the questions that we've been receiving as well. So thank you to everyone who's contributing and, um, and, and want uh, some more knowledge from our expert speakers. So thank you. That was Dr. Crow. Now, it's been such